the Mary Poppins anti-exam or anti-exam in the United States anti too by Pamela Lyndon Travers who was an Australian born British writer who wrote Poppins's stories in the 1930s this is the front page of the first ever uh, Mary Poppins anti-exam uh, I gave my 2020-2021 C11 group <laughs> It includes the questions that I mentioned on the cards in this video and it is designed to help students learn from their reading work better, learn to notice more, to develop their language awareness and their textual awareness. And all of this is shown later in the development of their ability to select useful language in ways which are better for their learning. To select it and to be able to organize it in their notebooks and review it in ways which are more useful for their learning. It's designed in a way which is meant to create curiosity and absorb them in, into language work forgetting a little bit about fear and things like that. It's very important uh, through this that students develop their ability to practice self-evaluation too. But of course, uh, they can also test the development of their language range and vocabulary range too, or their accuracy. Hmm. This particular anti-exam is reading comprehension and language awareness. Other kind of anti-exams are focused on listening work and things like that. But they are always about uh, engaging students in, in learning activities whose primary feeling or aim is curiosity and an interest, a developing interest in the language and in related issues like textual analysis or sociocultural questions or methodological questions, helping them learn to practice self-assessment or self-evaluation and to see where they need to work more and where they are doing well, you know. Actually, as people gave me the, their exercise when they finished, I was very happy to see that many of them were telling me, oh my God, I, I, I didn't know anything about this. I really need to work on this. You know, they were not fretting about passing or not passing, but they were saying, oh my God, I, when I read, I was not underlining the kind of useful language that helps me develop my knowledge uh, on, on this kind of language. Uh, which is actually interesting, right? What I do hope is that they understand that listening many times to the same material is very important to automatize uh, correct uh, production, to, to learn the syntax, uh, to allow it to sink in. Um, people don't generally understand this. Uh, that's why I insist in learning things by ear, by heart. Not by mental effort, but by automatizing its production, by listening and repeating, by listening many times, right? And then, of course, by doing the extra effort of language awareness. That is why we are here together, to learn to do that to learn to notice language and to learn to be able to select the language we want to learn in terms of the mistakes we make so we can learn to overcome them and in terms of the, the language we want to learn to make our, our language richer and, our, and improve our command over the language.